Hello again, this is uh, chapter 3, internal and external view of the plot display class. Um, we've got some uh, concepts to go through here, which is the uh, overloaded uh, constructor, uh, which is a brand new concept to, uh, to you. Um, we've also looked at creating objects and method calls in previous um, tutorials. Um, so we're going to go through all of those here, and uh, the clock display class covers all of those. Also, there's some exercises for you guys to do afterwards as well. Um, you will need to have a very good understanding of the number display class, so please have that open um, so you can see the method calls through the number display, so you can see how it's all joining together. Um, the object diagram, if you can remember, looks like this. Uh, the clock display has two fields, uh, which is shown there. Um, it's got the hours field, which is a number display type, and the minutes field, which is a number display type. That points at those specific objects, um, and then those objects have got those um, specific uh, integer values. Um, so the hours one has got a limit of 24, and the minutes one has got a limit of 60. Okay, so uh, let's dive in and have a look at the external view of what it's doing. Um, first of all, the first thing to notice is here that we've got two constructors when we right click on uh, clock display. So if we want to create an object, we've got two options. We can either create an object with um, with a specific time, or we can create an object uh, which, which is just all the zeros, is effectively sort of midnight. Um, we've got those two options. This is known as an overloaded constructor. Um, we can overload constructors as long as the parameters are different. So I could create another constructor called new clock display and just have an hour specified um, via the uh, via an integer. But I couldn't um, have a new clock display where it was just the minute because um, uh, the two types would be of the same, would have the same parameters, as in you cannot have two constructors with uh, the same int, individual int parameters. This is okay because we've got one list of parameters has no parameters and one has two parameters. So let's go ahead and create a clock display of a zero, 00 at the moment. And if we have a look at that, get time method, uh, we can see that it returns a string of 0000. zero, zero, zero. Um, so that uh, get time method um, as a, as a return type of a type string, um, and then we've got the other one, um, method here, which is a time tick, which has no return. It just simply ticks the time, so it is a void um, method. Again, if we click that a few times, and then get the time, we'll see uh, what the time has um, automatically been created at. Uh, we can also set the time. So let's set the time to twenty three fifty eight. So it's very close to midnight. Okay, that um, get time, and we'll see that is 23.58. Close that, and then um, let the time tick over. Now, we would expect it to go to 0, 0, 0, 0. And there it goes. So the, it's displaying and uh, functioning as we, um, we would think. Uh, now we need to go and have a look inside the actual method itself, or in uh, inside the class rather, to see what's going on. So let's open up the clock display class and dive in and have a look. So, um, first of all, the comments at the top. Um, it's a good idea for you to uh, get you to um, reading these comments um, to show you what exactly is going on. So make sure you have a read of that in your own time. Um, here we have the uh, public class uh, clock display and remember the class is created using a um, using the name of the class. Uh, public is the access modifier, we're going to talk about that for classes later um, and uh, so that creates our class. Uh, then we obviously need our brace um, to, to create our class and then if we go right to the end of our class we'll see the, the closing brace. So that brace there is the closing part of that. The fields are then created, they're different to previous um, the fields are now created. Um, we've got some uh, objects which have been created by this object. Now um, the objects create our number display types and we've got our hours and our minutes. Um, they're given the private access modifier so you can't directly access those particular fields. Um, uh, if they were given the public modifier you would be able to directly access those but uh, mostly of often fields are given a private access modifier. Um, Let's have a look at this um, overloaded constructor. So here we've got a constructor, um, public clock display. And here we've got another constructor, public clock display. Um, 
you can have as many constructors as you as you like, but the the parameter list must be different. Um, so here we see uh, that the parameter list is different because um, this one has a um, an integer and another integer. So uh, this, uh, a parameter list of two integers, whereas this parameter list is effectively no um, no um, parameters. So we can we can have that. We could, um, for example, do a say public clock display and then have a parameter of, of int hours. We can do that because that is a different um, parameter list again. So we've got one with one uh, with zero parameters, one with two int parameters, and then one with one oh, int parameter. Okay, so those are our overloaded constructors. Um, as we look on our uh, constructors, um, both of the constructors will create um, the objects. So we have our hours equals so hours equals new number display. Uh, we've seen from previous um, uh, recordings that that's how you create an object when you hardwire it in um, code-wise. Uh, you need to put the name of the object, and then use this new keyword, and then number display, um, and then the parameter. Remember, uh, the parameter um, needs to affect. Um, it needs to be the uh, what the constructor takes of the number display. So the number display constructor requires a specific parameter. So when we create our number display, the parameter must um, be there. So in this case, we put it as 24, for the minutes we put as 60. Um, here we have an update display method call. So this is an internal method call. So the update display method, which is within uh, the clock display. Um, if we just have a look at the update display method, so we can see what it does. We've looked at this previously in a previous um, um, session, but here it is again. Um, the void update display, um, the display string, which is of type string, the display string field is then created using hours.getDisplay value. So this is a now an external method call to the hours um, object and the getDisplay value method within that. So again, if we have a look at the display uh, class, we'll see that there is a getDisplay method. So we're actually calling that method from uh, from the clock play class. Get display value. Okay. Um, we then do some concatenation. Um, so this returns a type string. So we can concatenate a type string with another string, which we're going to do as a colon, and then concatenate that with the other um, display of the minutes dot get display value. So we've got two external method calls there, um, linking from an internal method call. So that's the first constructor. Second constructor takes in two parameters um, and this allows us to set the specific time. So we create our hours and our minutes objects in exactly the same way because the limits are both the same as we do with the, with the previous constructor. Um, the hours have 24 hours in the day and then the minutes have 60 minutes. Um, the, net, the thing we do here though is an in internal method call where we set the specific time to a specific hour and a minute. So let's have a look at that method. Here's our method here, which is a set time method, uh, and we set the time to um, a certain hour and a certain minute. So the hour which goes in here, so the parameter we give initially of the hour and the minute is then put into the parameters of this method call, and then that links that method call, if you see this hour and this minute, I'm connected to here. Um, and so then when we then go in and set our hour on our specific object, so we've got the hours object, um, the uh, set value method with hours, so if we look at the number display, um, we'll see that the number display has got a set value method, 
and that takes in a replacement value, which in this case, in the first one, is an hour, um, which we specified here and, and, and back up through the chain. And then the minutes.set value um, is then given by the minutes parameter as well. Okay, so that's external method calls um, for the hours.set value and the minutes.set value. This then is an internal method call then to the update display, and we've just previously explained that. So those are the two constructors of it and what, and what they do. The final um, thing we haven't looked at then is the time tick method. So this is probably the most complicated of all of them. Um, public void time tick, so again it doesn't return anything. And um, what it will do is it will do a minutes dot increment. Um, so again, it uses the minutes object and goes back to the uh, number display, and it will do minutes dot increment, which is this method here, which we've explained previously. Um, this is now testing if it's rolled over. So if the minutes dot get value is equal to zero, uh, it means it's just rolled over. So if that rolls over, then it means the hours need to be incremented by one. Once it's done all of this, then it updates the display. And that is pretty much that. Any questions um, or any dramas with that, we'll discuss it in class. See you then.